Why do we need database systems like MariaDB, Postgres, MySQL, and others? Well, let's imagine you're building a simple to-do app to keep track of daily tasks. Initially, you might think, why not just save each task directly to a file? After all, my programming language has constructs and libraries to save and read data to and from disk. Also, implementing this seems straightforward, right? To create a task, just write it to a file, and to delete it, remove it from the file. These are good points, however, as your app gains traction, you get more and more users, and suddenly you have dozens or hundreds or thousands of users trying to add, delete, and modify tasks simultaneously. At this point, the simplicity of files becomes fragile. Imagine one user is updating a task at the exact moment another tries to delete it. Or maybe two users are editing the same task at the same time. With a standard file system, you are likely to end up with corrupted data or lost data because there is no inherent mechanism to handle such conflicts in a file system. And that's only to mention one of the problems. You'll surely face consistency and security challenges as your application grows. Relational database systems handle these situations gracefully through something called the ACID properties. Essentially, these are a set of principles that ensure that even if your app crashes midway through an update, the data remains consistent and no half-completed tasks are left hanging. So back to the to-do app example. Imagine trying to move the task by groceries from pending to completed, which requires also changing the last updated property. But your app crashes right in the middle. Well, with a relational database, it's all or nothing. Either the task is marked as completed and the last updated property reflects the new value, or it's like you never try to update it in the first place. No incorrect half states. Now, let's consider data relationships. In your app, tasks might belong to different categories or users. In a file system, maintaining these relationships is cumbersome. You might end up with a separate file for each category or user, but then how do you quickly find all tasks across categories or ensure that two different users don't end up with the same task ID? Relational database systems have the ability to manage complex relationships, making it easy to, for example, query all the tasks for a specific user or category, or run even more complex queries like show me the number of completed tasks in the home category for user number 555 during the last month. Security is another biggie here. In a file system, if someone gains access to your files, they have your data. Relational database systems like MariaDB offer robust security features like access control and encryption. And then there is the issue of growth, right? Your simple to-do app might evolve into a complex enterprise project management tool over time. With a file system, every change is going to feel like you are trying to renovate a building with people still inside of it. Database systems are built to be flexible and scalable, meaning they are designed to grow with the applications, whether you're adding new features or handling more users. In the end, choosing a database system over a simple file system is a no-brainer. Why do we need SQL? SQL has a long and proven history. It survived the fuzz around NoSQL, and even if not perfect, it has demonstrated to be the best available language for data. And this is no surprise. I mean, the story began in the 60s, I would say, with the development of the first databases like the Integrated Data Store at General Electric. However, it was Edgar Codd's relational model that revolutionized data handling. His model, which turned data into a series of tables, or more strictly relations, but let's not get there, has influenced database systems ever since. This era also saw the birth of SQL, or SQL, which became the standard language for interacting with relational database systems such as MariaDB and others. As a fun fact, SQL was initially called SQL, but this name was a trademark in the UK, so they removed the vowels and that's how we get SQL. They continued to call it SQL though, and later they came up with the acronym Structured Query Language. SQL is a declarative language, meaning that you specify what you want to get and not how to get it. The database system is in charge of doing whatever it needs to do to get the requested data. SQL isolates database complexity. A database system is a complex piece of software with tons of algorithms implemented in it. These algorithms deal with different ways to get data stored in disk or memory. Different algorithms are more efficient in different circumstances, which includes different types of queries and different data sets. 
For example, in MariaDB, a component called the query optimizer is in charge of deciding what algorithms to use depending on the particular SQL query and the stats gathered on the data itself. The query optimizer analyzes the SQL query, the data structures, the database schema, and the statistical distribution of the data. It then decides whether to use an index, what joining algorithm is the best, and how to sequence the operations. This process involves a remarkable amount of complexity and mathematical precision, all of which the database abstracts away from you. As a developer or a data scientist, you only need to worry about writing the query and let the database figure out whether to use or not an index, B trees, hash tables, or even whether to add data to an in-memory cache, as well as many other things. SQL also allows you to handle writes, that is, creating and updating data. It also allows you to define the schema of the database, or in short, and oversimplifying the tables and their column structure. In fact, there's much more that SQL allows you to do. If you want to learn more about databases, SQL, and MariaDB, check my upcoming book, MariaDB for Developers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.